I mean, how typical are those cases then, Sarah? Certainly among my patients, they've had really good experiences, but clearly it does vary enormously. I've heard of cases where people have had 90 hours a week, but anyone who's disabled is entitled to a health and social care assessment to look not just at what their needs are, but at their parenting needs. And yeah. what they should be looking at there is not about taking your child away. Obviously, in extreme circumstances, the child's welfare has got to come first. But it should be all about how can we help support you to mm -hmm. be a really good parent. And to get that help, then, what is the usual process? Well, normally what will happen is because you've got a social worker, because you've had a social care assessment, because you've got disabilities, you contact them and they should come round before the baby's born so that hopefully everything is in place for when you go home with your baby. I see. And we've heard from uh, Laura's local council. We have indeed. What, what they, they said, have well, say? their social work department said they carried out an assessment of Laura and that she would have been fully aware at the time they carried out the assessment yeah. of what the implications were in terms of referral to child care and protection procedures but they then did a follow-up visit they are confident that the baby's going to be well looked after and therefore they've been able to put a package of care in place right. which includes a local care provider and support for her now it's okay. great news yeah. isn't it speaking of great news we spoke earlier on didn't we about the Duchess yeah. of Cambridge yes. lovely yes. news she's expecting a child but suffering lover from very acute morning sickness now is there anything anybody else out there can do to help? I mean, what is your advice on oh, this? First thing you need to be aware of if you haven't gone through it yourself is it's often misnamed morning sickness. Morning, noon and night sickness yeah. is often more like Absolutely. it. Mm. About one in 50 women get this really extreme version called hyperemesis and there it can be really quite dangerous because you can get dehydrated. You literally can't keep anything down. But for most women, it's a question of little and often, small amounts, really, really regularly. Lots of my patients swear by ginger, whether it's ginger yeah. tea or yeah. ginger nuts. What about nuts? acupressure? My wife yep. had this little bracelet that was like on a wrist. Well, interesting, yeah. there have been some studies where they did use that acupressure and it does seem to help. Of course, we use it for C sickness so why not and it's completely harmless and pear drops for some reason oh, oh yeah good of course yeah. when you've got when you're feeling sick you'll often have a really nasty taste in your mouth and it really does seem to be particularly good at taking mm. that away good old-fashioned remedies drops. Yeah. my wife used to have a dry biscuit which she used to yes. find very helpful yeah, yeah just one it lasted all nine months which is if you know of any uh, other weird and wonderful remedies uh, for morning sickness then let us know and then we'll try them out on harry a little bit later on but uh, yeah. thank you ever so much sarah and Happy birthday. happy birthday. Big one. Happy birthday to Sarah. Yes, happy birthday. <laughs> All right, we are now just three <laughs> weeks away from Christmas. And if your other half said, I'm just popping down to the shop to pick up the turkey and then didn't come home for a month, well, you would be forgiven, yes, yeah. for being a little short on the festive cheer. Yeah, but that is exactly what happened to one couple. Mind you, she did have a pretty good excuse. He's Angelica. Cape Wrath is the most northwesterly point of...